guys welcome back to channel the dimensions of anatomy myself dr aravind in this video we will be exploring the third dimension of the anatomy of thyroid gland i have already covered all the relevant points of the anatomy of thyroid gland with the help of diagrams in a separate video if you haven't watched it yet please watch it first the link is available in the description and is also now available on the screen okay now that you are thorough with the anatomy of thyroid gland let's explore the third dimension with the help of this 3d model all the 3d models shown here are created with open source software blender for copyright free 3d models or animations to be used with your personal projects or presentations do drop a mail at the mail id provided in the description okay let's start with the topic first we set the stage for thyroid gland first we will bring up the hyoid bone and the laryngeal cartilages and ligaments here we have the hyoid bone the thyroid cartilage the cricoid cartilage and the tracheal rings we have also added the ligaments the thyrohyoid ligament the cricotracheal ligament and here we have the intrinsic ligament separated into two parts by the sinus of larynx the quadrate ligament and conus elasticus the conus elasticus now let's add a few more structures to the stage okay here we have the cricothyroid muscle the inferior constrictor of pharynx continuing down as esophagus here this one is the trachea now let's bring in our hero or rather heroine the thyroid gland as we saw in the other video the thyroid gland has two lobes right and left lobe connected by a isthmus the thyroid gland extends from about the middle of thyroid cartilage to fourth or fifth tracheal ring. The isthmus extends from second to fourth tracheal ring. There may be a pyramidal lobe projecting from one of the lobes or the isthmus which is connected to the hyoid bone by levator glandular thyroid which is a fibrous or fibromuscular band. Now let's bring in the capsules. As we saw, the thyroid is covered by two capsules, the true capsule and false capsule. The true capsule is the peripheral condensation of the connective tissue of the gland itself and the false capsule is derived from pretracheal layer of deep cervical fascia. So we have the false capsule derived from pretracheal layer of deep cervical fascia. The posterior part of which is thicken to form the suspensory ligament of berry which is attached to the cricoid cartilage coming to the features of thyroid gland each lobe of the thyroid gland is pyramidal in shape with an apex and a base it has three surfaces lateral medial and posterolateral and two borders anterior posterior the isthmus has two surfaces, anterior and posterior, and two borders, superior and inferior. Now, let's move on to the blood supply. Let's bring in a few more structures to the table. Here, we have the arch of iota giving out the brachiocephalic artery, the left common carotid and left subclavian. The brachiocephalic artery soon divides into right common carotid and right subclavian. The subclavian arteries give out the thyrocervical trunk. The common carotid arteries move up and divide into internal carotid and external carotid. And these are the right and left vagus nerves. Now let's bring in the arteries supplying the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is supplied by the superior thyroid artery which is a branch of external carotid artery. 
The superior thyroid artery runs down to the apex of the gland where it divides into anterior and posterior branch. The anterior branch runs along the anterior border of the gland and then upper border of the isthmus and anastomosis with fellow of the opposite side. The posterior branch runs along the posterior border of the lobe. This artery is accompanied by the external laryngeal nerve. This is superior laryngeal branch of vagus dividing into internal and external laryngeal. The external laryngeal follows the artery very close up to the apex of the gland from where it diverges away. This is relevant surgically in order to save the external laryngeal nerve during thyroidectomy. The superior thyroid artery is ligated as close to the gland as possible. Now, the other artery supplying the thyroid gland is inferior thyroid artery, which is a branch of thyrocervical trunk of subclavian artery. The artery moves up, reaches the base of the gland where it divides into a few glandular branches supplying the gland and one ascending branch which moves up along the posterior border of the lobe and anastomosis with the posterior branch of superior thyroid artery. The inferior thyroid artery is closely followed by the recurrent laryngeal branch of vagus nerve. But here, the recurrent laryngeal nerve is away from the artery for most of its course except when it comes near the gland where the artery and nerve are close together. So, in contrast to the superior thyroid artery, our inferior thyroid artery is ligated as away from the gland as possible. Apart from these two arteries, sometimes there can be a third artery called thyroidea ema artery supplying the thyroid gland. The thyroidea ema artery when present arises either from the brachiocephalic artery or the arch of iota itself and it reaches the lower part of the gland. Now let's bring in the venous drainage. Here is our internal jugular vein opening into the subclavian vein to form the brachiocephalic vein. Let's bring in the veins which drain the thyroid gland. Thyroid is drained by three or sometimes four veins. The superior thyroid vein arises from the upper part of the gland and drains into the internal jugular vein. The middle thyroid vein arises from the middle part of the gland and drains into the internal jugular vein. The inferior thyroid vein arises from the base of the gland and it drains directly into brachiocephalic vein. Sometimes there can be a fourth thyroid vein called the vein of kosher. This when present arises from in between the middle and inferior thyroid vein and drains into internal jugular vein. Now let's bring in more structures which form the relations of thyroid gland. Coming to the relations of thyroid gland, let's see the relations of the lobes of the thyroid gland. The medial surface of each lobe, as you can see, is related to two tubes, the trachea and esophagus. Two muscles which are related to these two tubes, that is inferior constrictor muscle and the cricothyroid muscle and two nerves, the external laryngeal and recurrent laryngeal. The posterolateral surface is related to the carotid sheath and its contents, that is the carotid artery, the internal jugular vein and vagus nerve. The lateral surface is related to the muscles, sternohyoid, sternothyroid, homohyoid, and sternocleidomastoid. The anterior border of the lobe is related to the anterior branch of superior thyroid artery. Posterior border is related to the posterior branch of superior thyroid artery, the ascending branch of inferior thyroid artery and anastomosis between them. The apex of the lobe is related to superior thyroid artery and external laryngeal nerve. And the base is related to inferior thyroid artery and recurrent laryngeal nerve.
coming to the relations of isthmus the anterior surface of isthmus is related to a right and left sternohyoid and the posterior surface is related to second to fourth tracheal rings the upper border is related to the anterior branch of right and left superior thyroid arteries and anastomosis between them the lower border is related to inferior thyroid veins hope this video has helped you in understanding the position and relation of thyroid gland in a three dimensional space if you like the video do hit the like button for more such videos keep the channel subscribed for 3d models or animations created or tailored to your needs for use in your personal projects or presentations do drop a mail at the mail id provided live online classes are also available on demand thanks for watching bye